I hereby call to order this regular meeting of the Board of Education for Wilmette Public Schools, District 39, this Monday, September 18th, 2023. Will the clerk please call the roll? Aaron Stone? Here. John Cesaretti? Ann Hart? Here. Bonnie Kim? Here. Allison Pathless? Here. Al Amy Paling? Here. Lisa Schneider Fabes? Principal Dana Naziakos is here to introduce McKenzie students to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Good evening. Thank you for having us. We are here to talk a little bit about our amazing McKenzie outdoor spaces that um, are new, improved, and revamped this year. Our PTA, along with the McKenzie community, fundraised quite a bit of money to build an amazing new playground. Along with that, through our amazing enrichment um, that comes through the PTA, they've also partnered with the Organic Gardener to bring us a wonderful garden space. Um, and then we also are gonna talk a little bit about our mileage club, so really just talking about the outdoor spaces that we have at McKenzie. Hi, I'm Anthony Haddock, the assistant principal at McKenzie. Before I pass the microphone to our amazing cheetahs, um, as we hope you come and get to celebrate some of the outdoor spaces at McKenzie this year, um, we invite you to also check out the buddy bench that was installed in memory of Kate Hillbrand. Hi, my name is Charlotte, and I think the playground is better now be because um it's there for all abilities and some of the equipment is more safe than it used to be and the sway is better than the other equipment that used to be there and everything is more safe hi my name is annabelle and i like the new playground because of the sway it's much safer well it's it's safe and other people that have disabilities can go on it and I and I also like the slides. Hi, my name is Samuel, and the playground is better for many reasons, but if the, a few of the good reasons are because it's for kids with all abilities, it's safer and more colorful. I am Tommy Olson. Thank you for inviting me. I like the garden because it is for kids who like nature. My favorite memory of the garden was watering the plants in the summer. My name is Benson Schmidt. I'm in third grade. A thing a lot I like about the garden is that it has a good it has good arts and crafts. My name is Everett. I am in fourth grade at Mackenzie School. I like to do mileage club at recess because it lets me run and be crazy with my friends. My friends push me to run farther and faster. I also love when I scan at the iPad because you can see your progress. I also feel good about running five marathons in one semester last year. Thank you. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Thank you so much for coming to share all of that important information about the outdoor spaces at McKenzie. I hope that you enjoy literally hundreds more recesses there before you all go on to Highcrest or wherever you go after you're done with McKenzie and that you have a joyful, happy time playing in the outdoor spaces and running. Um, I have a little something for all of you. If you wanna come get in a little line over here, I'll give you the stuff there and then you can meet your parents out in the hall.
students, you couldn't see your parents while you were speaking, but they could see you and the pride on their faces. I'm telling you what, they are so proud of you. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, parents. What's a sway? I know, right? What's the sway? It's this, uh, it's like a oh, swing sweet. kind of a thing that you can climb up onto or roll up onto or be on. I'm gonna have um, to go check it out. It's, it is actually Ooh. really cool. Like, yeah. It's really, really cool. Huh. Allison, put yeah. your date. There you go. <laughs> I'll meet you there. Next board meeting, new sway. <laughs> I seek a motion to approve the minutes of the August 28th, 2023 Board of Education budget hearing, regular and executive session meetings. Motion to approve the minutes of the August 28th, 2023 budget hearing, Board of Education, regular and executive session meetings. May I have a second? Second. The motion has been made and seconded. Board members, are there any comments, errors, or omissions to the minutes? All those in favor of approving the minutes um, as submitted, please indicate by saying yay. 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 The motion carries. This is the first opportunity for the public to address the board. Are there any community members that wish to speak? Please come to the podium, state your community of residence, and you have three minutes. You guys hear me okay? Uh, I'm in Glenview on the edge of well, Met. My son goes to Ramona. Uh, so a year ago, we moved here from California specifically to put my son in Ramona Elementary School. It's been a ter terrific experience. Really happy with the move. Kids doing great in school. One of the things that we noticed this year was that there was a lot of turnover for paraprofessionals at Ramona year over year. So I tried to figure out why. Everybody seems happy at Ramona. Teachers are great, getting paid well. I think the answer is incredibly stressful work. I can't fix that. I don't think anybody in here can fix that. What we can fix is pay. They're getting paid $19 an hour. I looked at competitive, uh, comparative school districts, True North. They're getting paid $23 an hour as a starting, starting wage. The Illinois Board of Education has given this district one of the highest ratings for the amount of cash on hand it's got. That usually covers about 180 days is where you get the highest rating. We have 293 days of cash on hand at this district. At least we did during the last um, data analysis that I, was available to me in 2020. I'm in, I've raised money from venture capitalists before I had my own business. One of the things VCs tell you after you raise the money, is spend it, spend it fast. And I wanna see results. I think every parent with any neurotypical kid, but especially a special needs kid, wants you to spend it. We've got a lot of cash on hand. We've got a clear problem, which is paraprofessionals either not being hired or leaving, and there, there's a pay gap. That money use it. I'm not asking you to be fiscally irresponsible. Obviously, you're incredibly fiscally responsible. The State Board of Education has said so over the last 10 years. But I think there's some wiggle room here to increase the amount that we pay paraprofessionals. These students are the most vulnerable students. They're students who thrive on a routine. When that routine is disrupted, their education is disrupted. It's incredibly problematic for special needs kids. You may not know this, but we actually pay incredibly competitive salaries, especially relative to True North for teachers. I can't imagine why we're not paying those competitive salaries for paraprofessionals. They spend as much time, if not more time with our kids and they're instrumental in making sure our, all of our children have a bright future, including special needs children. This board's done a lot, particularly around making sure paraprofessional pay has increased. Obviously in the first year, it's gone up by 16%, and year, uh, in a given year, it goes up between two and 5% based on merit and other factors. Inflation last year was 8%, 8%. Paraprofessionals lost money last year, working <laughs> District 30. The question that I'd ask everybody here is, do we feel comfortable as a, as a district paying paraprofessionals less than we'd pay a babysitter? Babysitters pull in $25 an hour. Babysitters look after your kid for a few hours every night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, you have a couple options if you have more to say. You can email all of us. You can also wait till the others 
it's a part of the meeting where there's public comments and you get another minute then. Um, and then if you don't mind, could you state your name for the record? I don't think I caught that at the beginning. Sure. My name's Mike Gordon and don't worry about it. Okay. I think All right. I got the point across. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Are there any other community members that wish to speak? Okay. Um, I guess we're moving on to board reports. We do not have um, facility or school finance board reports from this month. So we're moving on to the strategy committee, Mrs. Schneider Fabes. Um, we have a discussion focused on an in depth review of the plan action that was included in that particular uh, Following the district's red supervisory system. Sorry, excuse me, Lisa. Can you just move the microphone a little bit closer? I'm worried that people at home might not be able to hear. Thank you so much. Um, so following the district strategy advisory teams reviewed these plans, the board reviewed and provided feedback on the proposals as well. Um, a final presentation and approval of these proposed action steps will be provided later this evening um, yeah, as part of these evening presentations. That's it. Thank you. Moving on to liaison reports. Um, it looks like we have a couple meetings coming up. CRC is meeting on October 10th. Mrs. Schneider Fabes is going to go to that. Thank you. And the Ed Foundation is meeting September 20th. Mrs. Kim is going to that. Thank you. We look forward to your reports next month. Um, looks like the Wilmette Village Intergovernmental Cooperation Working Group is meeting October 25th. Again, thanks to Mrs. Kim and Mrs. Schneider Fabes. Do you have any updates on that? Just okay. So your meeting looks like October 25th. Right. Um, okay. Um, so I think we'll probably hear about that in November. Um, and then the Illinois Association of School Boards, Mrs. Pathless. Yes, thank you. Um, I just want to remind everyone that registration for the 2023 Joint Annual Conference is still open. Um, it takes place in Chicago on November 17th through the 19th. Um, and also that the IASB North Cook Division dinner meeting is scheduled for Monday, October 30th. It's at 6 p.m. in Rolling Meadows. Um, I believe the registration fee is $70. Uh, the program for the event features an evening with State Superintendent Tony Sanders. And also, there will be um, an election of officers uh, by the governing board. Thanks. You're welcome. And we're kicking it back to you with the legislative update. Yes, the legislative update. Um, the Illinois General Assembly is not in session. However, they will convene for a veto session on October 24th, 25th, 26th, and again on November 6th, 7th, and 8th. The regular session is set for the second Wednesday of January, which is January 10th. And also, um, I reached out to Bridget Peach at Ed Red uh, regarding our um, continuing work on the legislation to end the use of school buildings as polling places. And she reported that they've submitted language to Senator Rom Billy Ballum of the 8th District and they're waiting to hear back. Their expectation is that the bill will move, um, they will move a bill in the upcoming fall veto session and they will keep us updated. So we'll see. Great, thanks for doing that. Um, I'm glad to hear things are moving along. Yeah. That's great. Um, this moves us to information items. Dr. Kremascoli. Yes, thank you. We have just a handful of updates for the board and community. First of all, under written communication, the board re received, excuse me, written communication regarding reading and discussion. And from, from Carl Hopman regarding the diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging task force from Sarah Cooper regarding keep 39 fees, and finally from Mike Gordon regarding paraprofessional salaries. Under administrative announcements from myself and our staff, we have just a couple of updates. First of all, we hosted our curriculum nights. Thank you to all of the parents who joined us at our schools uh, for curriculum night presentations. These are really wonderful opportunities for parents and teachers to connect at the start of the school year. Teachers provide an overview of curriculum across the content areas and also offer some insights on how the classrooms are working, um, what to expect within the classrooms and the supports that are available. Um, teachers put a lot of time into these events. Um, and so thank you to our teachers and to our staff for all the work that they 
uh, did in preparing for and hosting these events. We will host, I think, our final curriculum night uh, of the year at WJHS as they welcome our eighth grade parents later this week. Excellent. And um, also just a, a quick note, our next uh, significant district-wide contact point with parents and teachers is our fall parent-teacher conferences. We've got some time, so not to worry, but uh, this year we will again be hosting these conferences using Meet the Teacher. Uh, the board will remember Meet the Teacher offers uh, parents the opportunity to sign up for conferences uh, at a time that works best for them. Um, and there's a, a lot of different ways for them to do that. Parents can anticipate that the appointment registration for parent-teacher conferences will open again on Monday, October 30th. We always do that on that um, half day. Uh, so parents hopefully have the chance to sign in and select a time that works for them. And parents should mark their calendars for um, this date and also for parent-teacher conferences, which are November 16th and 17th preceding fall break. We really uh, encourage parents to take the opportunity to meet with teachers and to use these two days uh, to make an appointment to do so. In this very room, just last week, we hosted, uh, well, Past 39 was here with us, and, and together we hosted the Ice Cream Social. This is an annual kickoff event for uh, this group, uh, and it was a really successful event this year. Um, we had uh, Sue Mack, an expert in disability advocacy and parent rights, who provide, provided a presentation to our parents about how they can support their children through meaningful participation in IEP meetings. I had the chance to stop by and it really was a great presentation and the room was packed. I think every chair was taken. Uh, it was really well done. So kudos to everyone involved with that. We're so pleased to see so many parents taking advantage of these opportunities to connect with one another and also to learn from the experts that are available. Uh, and then finally, our Freedom of Information Act, the district received a FOIA from Catherine Smizer of NBC asking for any requests to reconsider, ban, and or challenge any books and other materials from January 1st, 2013 to the present. And that concludes our reports. I had a quick question. Yes. Um, sorry, I, was, I should have stepped early, but. Um, can I um, ask, are the um, teacher conferences this year going to be like virtual or in person or both? As yeah, the there, there's opportunities for both at the fifth through eighth grade level. Um, some might remember that we had a lot of really good experiences with the virtual. So when those invitations go out to everyone, you should really read those directions very carefully at our five eight level because the students switch classes so much. It really um, makes it easier not only for our teachers, but really for our parents to get around and make sure that they meet with everyone. So um, we're really leaning on that virtual opportunity quite a bit. Um, but if, if, uh, if parents really feel like they need that personal uh, point of contact, we certainly will. Thank you. Yes, uh, curiosity point two is the I wish that it was because it was fantastic, but I don't believe that it was. Kristen, am I right about that? It was not recorded, but we will put the um, slides up on. Yeah, the the, and the slides were really good. They mm -hmm. they provide some context to the conversation, but really her her presentation was so great. We may need to invite her back again, maybe even on one of our parent ed events because she really did a great job of talking through how to come to a meeting prepared and in, in, in an advocacy manner but also a partnership manner and i think really those go hand in hand so it was it was really great so hopefully we'll be able to have her back again. mrs schneider faves yes wow yes of course so have we had any requests to well if you look in the foias you can always see what was uh produced and so under the foia request um i don't believe we had any records responsive to this request meaning we don't have Are we ready for strategic plan updates? We sure are. Thank you so much. Uh, the board has heard a lot about this. So our team and I decided we were going to uh, give a, a relatively brief presentation. For those who might want a more in-depth presentation, we certainly would encourage you to read the report, but also um, to look back at the Committee of the Whole presentation where 
we discussed this in pretty good length. Uh, but we're really excited to be in the third year of our strategic plan and we're here today to present the final revisions of our action steps so what we'll do is we'll walk through each goal area and the action steps and um, we've asked the team to give some high level highlights of what the most important work is that we will be looking to accomplish this year and also in front of you board members i see several of you holding it up um, this year we're going to publish uh, an accomplishments document and our goal here is really just to highlight some of the accomplishments from last year and then to look forward to some of the key goals for this coming year. We know that these reports are really lengthy for you all, for our community, for our teachers and for our administrators and so we're really just hoping to uh, further celebrate and plan for what we what we plan to accomplish. So. That's what this document is about. We, we grabbed an idea from another district that uh, seemed to be doing some things really well. And so we wanted to uh, capitalize on that. So this, um, once our plan gets approved, will be produced and, and we'll have it available for our events, such as the League of Women Voters event, uh, State of the Community. So with that, I'll let Katie give us a kickoff. Sure, okay. thank you very much. Um, on behalf of all of the administrators, the goal champions will give you the highlights uh, for these action steps. Um, but as we do annually, we provide some context for our new family. Thank you for tuning in today and wondering how we got um, came to this journey. So I wanted to provide that. So in January of 2021, District 39 strategic planning team that consisted of staff, parents, students, community members, and leaders of other community organizations met throughout the year uh, to engage in developing a multi-year strategic plan uh, with the help of consultants from the Consortium for Educational Change. The team collected feedback from a variety of District 39 community members, including students and members of the Board of Education during Committee of the Whole and Board of Education meetings. Detailed information and meeting materials were provided to the community through a strategic planning process um, and it's on our website, so we invite anyone interested in learning a little bit more of that history to access it there. Um, then moving forward on September 27, 2021, the administration submitted the goals and strategies of the 21-26 District 39 Strategic Plan for Board of Education approval. And having received that approval, the work continued to develop the specific action steps of the first year, which was in 2021-2022 of a multi-year strategic plan. And annually, the action steps are monitored and progress updates are shared. And based on this information, the work to refine and or develop specific action steps for the following school year begins in the spring and continues through the summer and early fall, which brings us to tonight. So again, on behalf of uh, all of the administrators, we respectfully submit these action steps for 23-24 and ask uh, the board for approval. We'd also like to acknowledge the district strategic advisory team. Um, we ended a two-year term, and so there were many who followed up from the strategic planning process and continued their two years, uh, continued for two years. And so we thank them, but we have a new group this year who will also serve for two years and help during the process of this process. Okay, so let's start with goal one. So goal one is focused on student achievement and growth. And the strategies that we identified for this are really around differentiating our instruction for our students, collaborating among the professionals working with our kids, and providing professional development that is really going to focus on the skills that our teachers need in order to ensure that our students make appropriate academic growth. So the next area, I'm going to talk a little bit about the action steps. Uh, you can read them here if you want to see them in detail, but some of the big, big ticket things that we're going to be doing this year is really focusing a lot on MTSS. We've been working on it for a couple of years and it's really been in, integrated into all of our buildings at this point in time. So our teams really do a lot of reviewing of the data after our benchmarking, so three times a year to look at kids who may need, be in need of either enrichment or intervention. Um, we're continuing to track that as we go through the year to make sure that the interventions that we're providing are helping our students make the progress that we need and that we're making changes if they're not. Um, in addition to that, we also are adding new elementary math specialists this year who are going to help support our students and our teachers 
in developing stronger math skills, so that's another area of focus. We will join our reading specialists at that elementary level who have been working with students on reading as well. And in addition to that, we will be doing curriculum review um, in both the areas of reading and math. So we are continuing to sort of look at those core content areas for that elementary level as we look at achievement and growth for our students. And then professional development this year is going to continue to focus on MTSS. So all of our institute days and many of our other meetings will really be helping our teachers really understand the nuances of different aspects of MTSS, making sure that we are providing the interventions that our students need to make the growth that we are expecting of them. Um, and we will also be teaching our teachers about how to help our students develop skills and goal setting. That's another area that we're going to focus on some more this year. And then we start goal two, which is supportive community. And in our supportive community, we're really looking at implementing a consistent curriculum that helps our students learn and develop the social emotional competencies that they need to be successful students as well as successful citizens. And then we're really working on strengthening the sense of belonging and engagement among our students. So everything that we do is really helping our students become part of the community here at Wilmette. I, and we're going to start with, I'll start with the first two steps. Um, we've been working on the foundations for behavior. Um, we've had foundation, building foundations, behavior teams have been developed at every building. And they all, every building worked over the summer to develop a, an educational and instructional materials to really start the year off with our students and teaching strong routines and habits that will help them develop the skills they need to be successful in the school in terms of behavior. Um, the teams will continue to monitor that progress throughout the year, and we, we have um, eight sessions scheduled with our trainer from foundations this year, and the teams will really be analyzing and digging into the data that they collect around what they've done so far and, find, and, and really providing nuanced changes and, and continuing to help this spread throughout each building. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, in the uh, social emotional learning realm, uh, we're continuing our work on implementing our social emotional learning curricular resources and instruction. And a part of that work includes a pilot of a curriculum that has a focus on belonging called Wayfinder at fifth through eighth grades. Um, another part of that work will also include uh, supporting planning for interventions for students who might be struggling with social emotional learning. So Kristen talked about interventions for academics. Um, we're building our capacity with social emotional learning as well. Uh, to support all of our curricular implementation, uh, professional development will be differentiated according to the needs of our staff. And um, also we'll have elements that focus on an important area of SEL instruction, which is diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging and building our staff capacity in that realm. At goal three, Katie Lee and I co lead the eighth professional community. Uh, in a nutshell, in the essence, we are looking with this goal to identify the needs of our staff and really develop our The action steps, the first four are similar to ones we've done in, in past years. We're gaining momentum with them in terms of that three-step process. Starting with number five, you'll see that we're really looking to identify a survey, a system by which we collect information about the needs of our staff so that we can work to address them. We've been using five essentials. We'll be switching to different um, official survey for that, but we might also be looking information um, more informally so that we are discussing some of the needs of our staff in our schools. Continuing, um, we want to establish a committee to be able to then work to start an action plan to address those needs. So we have a committee that will be starting in late fall, early winter to help us develop an action plan to support the needs of staff. We already heard a little bit about the parent education training looking to develop that same type of um, professional development for our student services faculty. Again, this partnership is established with our action plans and And then the last one is continuing work that we started last year. It wasn't actually an action step, but it's the um, 
started last year, and that is our DEI, Do Your Diversity Up and Inclusive Alliance Task Force, that looks at attracting, hiring, and retaining people. Four, family partnerships. We have two strategies. The first one, focusing on uh, communication through more consistent and effective strategies. And the second one, implementing strategies to better support successful transitions, fourth to fifth grade and sixth to seventh grade. I'll talk about the first three uh, action steps and then our co uh, my co goal champion, Kel Jackson, will talk about the, the other three. But the first two, at least, um, are focusing on the district and school websites, so strengthening our communication channels. Uh, which also includes, at least for the websites, uh, a content review uh, that is happening this, this fall very, very shortly. Um, we're still waiting on the last few pieces of design work to be done with the sites themselves. Uh, slow process, but uh, as you have probably seen, it's one worth waiting for. And our social media channels are utilizing targeted advertising and that's not just to our existing parent base, but also the, the broader community and a little beyond. Uh, so we have started that and we'll continue to use that at certain points throughout the school year. Uh, an action step, the third one there, uh, that it, uh, was added in June, but has already been implemented, so it was a short one, is providing an online newsletter tool with analytics for our teachers, departments, and schools to use. Uh, although it was just added in June, uh, after doing some research uh, as to the tools that are out there, we did not see a need to wait. Um, we landed on S'more and released S'more for all of our staff to optionally use this fall. Many of our staff have taken us up on that offer. So uh, if you're a parent that has received a newsletter this year from their teacher and you notice uh, the template uh, kind of uh, bright with color and audio rich and actually analytics that our teachers can see as far as who has viewed and clicked on what uh, that is due to that new tool so that's been very well received and for the, the last three I'll turn it over to Kelly Jackson. Sure I'm going to talk a little bit about the transition um, from fourth to fifth and sixth to seventh and really this year we're focusing on sixth to seventh as we implemented um, a new transition plan for those students and we'll continue to evaluate the effectiveness of that plan. Um, as a part of that entire fifth through eighth grade transition, we've already begun work on a pathways document to really talk about what each class entails and illustrate the transitions between those classes and options for learning at each grade level um, across fifth through eighth grade. Uh, finally, in conjunction with our work on goal two, so you'll see there's some overlap between some of our goal areas, um, which is the support of community. Um, we really focus in goal two on teachers and students, um, but this goal is about communicating with families. So um, we will be looking to increase our level of communication around diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging, as well as SEL, um, social emotional learning, um, that we share with families in the community, just so everybody feels informed and, and knows what's going on in our classrooms, and also um, to really highlight the work that we are doing, because we're really proud of it. Goal five, stewardship or resources. Uh, two strategies, uh, the first one being a focus on implementing a long-term capital planning. And the second item being looking at the examination of resource allocation practices, particularly focus on staffing. So the action steps for, for next year. Uh, first one, similar to what we've had in the past, we will take that twice a year look at our five-year capital improvement plan. Now that we're in the middle of this five-year strategic plan, one of the things that will probably be different this year is the first half of the year, we will work to gather some data with our construction team and then start to look at the back half of the next five-year cycle, the first, starting from today. So really the last two to three years of five years from now, and just start to get an idea and, and plan for what's out there beyond like the summers of 24 and 25. Uh, we'll continue to look at our smaller building based uh, capital projects, try and fit those in within our summer building use. It's always a challenge, but there's always lots of uh, projects large and small to complete. 
And then the last item is keeping an eye on what's happening in Springfield and even potentially locally uh, with various types of legislation. Uh, last year was it was a big one um, with the kindergarten legislation that got signed over the summer. So taking all of that information and in December updating our five year projections uh, for the board uh, will be a big focus this year. Thank you so much. Board members, are there any comments or questions? This is Kim. Thank you. Um, I just had a, a, a question that maybe you can help direct me. Um, is there, um, it's probably on the website, I just couldn't find it, but um, is there a way to see um, who is a current member of the DSET team? Oh, yes, absolutely. Um, I don't know if the membership has been updated on the website yet, but I can provide that information. We'll make sure that we have Any other board members? Mr. Cesaretti? Yeah, I, uh, I think we have the same thing that's happening. I really appreciate this process. Uh, it seems very effective you know, as far as the strategic planning process. So this is another, looks like another good year. It's going to be a lot of ambitious uh, plans. So I appreciate you can all be a good track record. Thank you. Mrs. Schneider Fabes. Love it. Thank you. Thank you. I think that um, it, it, can, it can be overwhelming in the sense of some of those things where um, anyone else? Yeah, I will just echo what everyone said. I, I think we're all pretty thrilled to approve this. So thank you. Um, all right, we are moving on to board policy review. Uh, we have a number of policies up for um, second reading today. And so this is the opportunity for the board to review and discuss. Dr. Kowalecki, any highlights that you'd like to mention? From the first reading, there was one thing that we had that we've made that correction. Board members, any other suggestions? Things you noticed? Nothing. Okay. Then uh, this would be the second opportunity for the audience to address the board. I do not see any audience members here, so we will move on to the consent agenda. The next order of business is the consent agenda under the action items. Are there any items that the board would like pulled from the consent agenda? Mrs. Hart, please proceed with the motions. Motion to approve the personnel report dated September 18, 2023. Motion to approve the District 39 strategic plan, engage, empower, inspire action steps for 2023-2024. Motion to approve a second and final reading Board of Education Policy 3.30. 4 colon 4 5, 6 colon 1 0, 6 colon 8 0, 7 colon 1 8 0, 7 colon 1 9 0, 7 colon 2 7 5, 7 colon 3 0 5, 8 colon 1 0, 8 colon 2 5, 8 colon 3 0, 8 colon 8 0, and 8 colon 9 5. to approve, uh, approve the accounts payable for bills listed between October 29th, 2023 through September 18th, 2023 in the following amounts. Educational fund, $325,436.14. O&M fund, $141,174.76. Transportation, $40,000. $835.90, and 
capital projects two million seven hundred thirty six thousand one hundred ninety seven dollars and twenty three cents total all funds three million two hundred forty three thousand six hundred forty four dollars and three cents Motion to approve the manual checks issued between August 29th, 2023 and September 18th, 2023 in the following amount. Educational fund, $770,113.02. O&M fund, $93,619.04. Transportation, $1,099.74. Total all funds, $864,831.80. May I have a second? Second. The motion has been made and seconded. Would the clerk please call the roll? John Cesaretti? Yes. Ann Hart? Yes. Bonnie Kim? Yes. Allison Pathless? Yes. Amy Paling? Yes. Lisa Schneider Fabes? Yes. Aaron Stone? Yes. The yeas have it, motions carry. We're moving on to conference items. Is there any old business? Is there any new business? Is there any good and welfare? Okay. May I have a motion to adjourn to executive session to discuss collective negotiations specific personnel, special education slash individual student matters, and semi-annual review of executive session minutes. Motion to adjourn to executive session to discuss collective negotiations, specific personnel, special education slash individual student matters, and semi-annual review of executive session minutes. May I have a second? Second. Motion having been made and seconded, will the clerk please call the roll? John Cesaretti? Ann Hart? Yes. Bonnie Kim? Yes. Allison Pathless? Yes. Amy Paling? Yes. Lisa Schneider Fabes? Yes. Aaron Stone? Yes. Motion carries. We are now adjourned to executive session, and the time is 7.43 p.m.